So uh, what have we learned or what conclusions might we draw? Uh, you know, what, what, are, um, how, what, what kind of activities can we compare refactoring to? Um, because a lot of people don't really think about refactoring until they find themselves in a situation where they're forced to do it. For example, you need to extend some code, and the only way to create an extension point or create the seam that you want is to first do some refactoring in that place. Or uh, in an example like the one we saw, there is a bug that you're trying to isolate. And to put that bug into a place where you can test it separately, you might need to do some refactoring. But the reality is refactoring is something you should be thinking about all the time. Uh, and as a motivating example from this, um, here's the first draft of a, a document you might recognize. Um, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for a people to advance from that subordination in which they have, what the hell, what is this, right? This is somebody's first draft. This is a true first draft, by the way. Uh, this is the version that you're probably familiar with. Um, if you're a student of American history, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which have connected them with another. I mean, that sounds a lot better, doesn't it? It's the same content, but the structure has been vastly improved. So you could think of this as a refactoring of the Declaration of Independence, or the opening passages thereof. And to me, the moral of the story is just because your code works doesn't mean you're done. It just means that you have a first draft. Right? And as with writing, the first draft is good enough to get the idea across, but the final draft is the one that, that people are going to read, and it's the one that other programmers who come after you are going to depend on. So refactoring is worth doing, because unless you're the kind of person who'd be satisfied with your first draft of writing, and I really hope you're not, um, refactoring is how you get from something that works and expresses the idea to something that somebody else would be happy to take over. So some fallacies and pitfalls, uh, you know, as usual, what are some, some ways that you can avoid common problems if this is your goal? Um, first, realize that most of your programming time is going to be spent in this activity. It's not going to be fixing bugs. Uh, the statistics already tell us that. And it's not going to be creating new code. It's going to be improving the code you do have, either for your own sake or for the sake of others. So you know, what's the counterpoint to this? One counterpoint is the code has gotten so ugly that you say, forget it. Let's just start over. Throw out this code. We understand what it's supposed to do. Let's rewrite it. This is the worst thing you can possibly do. This is almost never the right thing. Um, it is possible to get to a point where you've accumulated so much technical debt that there's really nobody in the organization who understands the code well enough to do anything but start over. Uh, but this is the standard programmer optimism, right? Getting the first 50% of the code working from scratch seems like it's easy. And then the last 50% is mostly impossible. So this is almost never the right thing to do. This is like the nuclear option. This is like, I don't know, shutting down the government because you disagree with certain legislation. <laughs> almost never the right thing to do. Um, and as we said, uh, several times in several different guises, stick to one activity. Programmers are also easily distractible. Um, so when you're refactoring, remember what your goal is. You're not changing behaviors. You're not fixing bugs. You're improving the structure and leaving everything else alone. So resist the temptation to say, oh, I'm, I know I'm refactoring this other method, but I'm just going to fix up this little thing over here that looks sloppy. That's a separate task. Stick to the task at hand. We talked about metrics and how, just like tests, uh, it's bad to sort of slavishly follow the metrics and have all of your refactoring aimed at getting those numbers to go lower. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the version you have uh, is the version you, you really wanted. And even if there is a version that would have made the, some of the metric numbers improve, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easier to read. Um, what's a good example? Uh, I suppose you could say a good example from the literature is something like, these are the times that try men's souls. I could also say, soul-wise, these times are trying. That's shorter, right? But it doesn't have the emotional impact somehow. So there is a time to know when your code is as beautiful as it's going to be. Um, don't over-rely on metrics. Use them as a general guideline, right? And I think Code Climate sets a good example in this regard. They compute a number of metrics, and they sort of compute an overall aggregate score that really tells you which parts of your code are generally good and which parts are generally in need of attention. Um, and of course, the, the corollary, if you don't do these things, is you're going to get to a point where you have to do a big refactor. And let me tell you, big refactorings are painful. Um, I've been doing a big refactoring on software that I wrote three or four years ago. And some of it really, you know, and I, I thought about it. I thought about, I'll just throw it out and start over. But you know, this is working code. Working code, as we'll soon see, is a rare and beautiful thing. So uh, I decided to take the pain, go through the refactoring. I'm learning a lot from it. Uh, but the big thing I'm learning is don't let it slide for too long. Because after a certain point, it gets exquisitely painful to do the refactoring. So with those fallacies and pitfalls in mind, we can ask, which is true regarding refactoring? That it usually results in fewer total lines of code, that it should not cause existing tests to fail when you start doing your refactoring, that it addresses explicit versus implicit customer requirements, or that it results uh, often results in changes to your tests. So which of these is true? <laughs>